Thank you very much, Lars. Dear Madame Rajavi, former Prime Minister Bonnevik, Mr. Lundestad, Permanent Secretary of the Nobel Institute, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. It's indeed a, not only nice, but also a bit of an honor to be here in this building at the Nobel Institute, the world-famous Nobel Institute, for this important seminar on issues relating to Iran. The National Council of Resistance of Iran, which is an umbrella organization for the various Iranian exile groups, has been receiving more and more attention and support worldwide in recent years, particularly in Europe and in the United States. But let me say that this increase in support is not a coincidence. And it's not surprising, as the NCRI represents the only plausible democratic alternative to the religious dictatorship that now rules Iran and has been moving rapidly towards becoming a nuclear power and hence not only a regional but also a global threat. The call for a regime change in Iran is therefore not based on any disrespect for religion or anything of that kind, but it is a call for representative democracy and basic human rights. Camp Liberty is badly protected with terrible medical and sanitary conditions. Repeated attacks have led to many more deaths and injuries. And the UN has failed these people, not to mention the United States, which has the greatest, greatest responsibility in this matter, and more so than any other country or organization. So I would just concur with Madam Rajavi <clears throat> and say two things. One, the world is consumed with the nuclear issue. But the nuclear issue is but a symptom of the regime in power. You see, if you didn't have that regime, the nuclear issue would be immaterial. So we are consumed with a negotiation over nuclear weapons, but we cannot understand the more fundamental problem. And that is, it is the regime that is trying to obtain those nuclear weapons that is the problem. Two, as the world community tries to negotiate on the nuclear issue, the negotiation is really, can we accept Iran as a civilized nation of the world? That is really what is at stake here. Can they be accepted amongst all free nations of the world? 52 defenseless residents of Ashraf camp have been killed and seven hostages have abducted uh, since September 2013. And we should, as international community, to protect those camps and take care of those people. And therefore, I call United Nations, United States, particularly European Union countries, to be on the side of the Iranian people to help them and to try to fight in favor of democracy in the country. In addition, so we should support the Iranian opposition in the case of Camp Liberty to protect the persons in the camps. And therefore I call the United Nations and again the United States and the European countries to take an active role to force Iraqi special forces to release the seven uh, Camp Afsar hostages. And in fact, it's very important that we would deploy Blue Helmet Unit 24 hours, seven days in the Camp Liberty to guarantee these people's safety in the camp. This is, is understood. That's why the regime in this situation constantly is plotting against the organized operation. France, 
after this massacre of the 1st September last year of the Camp Ashraf, we have seen many international condemnation from the Foreign Affairs Ministries as well as NGOs and parliamentarians, but the responsibility of the Iraq government in this crime was not adequately paid attention to neither by the US government nor the UN and our governments. Six UN independent experts bodies highlighted this on the, uh, the 9th September of the last year. This means that an independent investigation should be done about this crime. Meanwhile, we have witnesses recently. The Iraq government secretly buried and bodies of these 52 victims without their families or relatives being present. We would not let them whitewash this crime. This is possible throughout the efforts of all of us. But I fully agree with the two of you who have emphasized uh, that the people in the camps, they have a legitimate right of protection. There is a humanitarian cause here for which we should all stand up, for which we should all, all support. The details of uh, the safeguard system, of the inspections in Iraq, the nuclear history of uh, Iran, sorry, Iran, uh, has to be uh, uh, yeah, clarified somehow. It remains to be seen whether that can be, uh, that can be achieved. But uh, if the uh, negotiations succeed, that will change the landscape of the Middle East and beyond. And if it uh, does not succeed, I'm sure that the question of use of force will move up again on the international agenda. So very much is at stake in this connection. I was the person within the United Nations system to visit them in Ashraf every week. I monitored the situation and reported. The Ashrafis have been attacked repeatedly. And the government of Iraq had never hidden its intentions towards the residents of Camp Ashraf. It's the United Nations who always try to change sort of the uh, attitude of the government of Iraq by covering up and saying that there is some gains in the process in Iraq in terms of protection of human rights while the government of Iraq is openly pledging to never respect the human rights standards of the United Nations vis-à-vis -vis the residents of Camp Ashraf. So we've been more loyalists to the government of Iraq than to the United Nations. In April 2011, the Ashrafis were attacked 36 were killed, and a large number of people were injured. I led the fact-finding mission to Camp Ashraf, and I did the body counts, and I reported accordingly. UNAMI prevented me from making the report public. Any observers must ask today as we are asked in our public opinion and statement, why three massacres took place in Ashraf? In July 2009, in April 2011, and the last was in September 2013, when it totaled more than 100 people were killed and thousands wounded. They were defenseless people who were covered under international law. Why Camp Liberty was attacked by rockets four times last year that left 
14 dead and hundreds injured. Why, despite the clear threat of missile attacks, the Iraq government deliberately moved out 7,500 to the walls that would protect the fragile uh, that would protect the, uh, the fragile missiles. Uh, why, after international pressures and many letters, and after so many deaths and endured these tables are being brought back like a dropper? Do they want future attacks to have more causalities? Why liberty does not have the most basic health and safety facilities? Why they prevent the recharging sewage tankers from doing their daily workflow? And the spillover effect of poisoned water causes the residents to develop the dif different diseases. Why do, they ch why do they cancel medical appointment of the residents or, or have the deliberate delay? Why some drugs cannot be brought in? Why, due to this medical disease, 14 people have lost their lives? Why even they obstruct food entry and a lot of more things? How can you do such things to a small community in the world?